Now, I wanted to start this video off with a comparison just to show you just how good this budget capture card is that we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, this is a Zoomfoon 4K capture card, okay? It's just got a really long Amazon name, so I'm calling it the CanLink. Now, one of these pictures here, one of these video feeds is the Zoomfoon. The other one is the Elgato CamLink. Now, the price of the Elgato CamLink is £120, but you can often find it for £100. The price of the Zoomfoon 4K is £40 to £45, but I paid £33 for one and £36 for another. This thing has always got a discount voucher available on Amazon. And just have a little look. We finally have cheap capture cards for our cameras, which aren't trash. No MJPEG. This is an NV12 feed because we're coming through at 4K. It also supports YUI2. I'm going to go through all the specs with you in a minute. Just have a little look. Tell me which one is the cam link and which one is the Zoom thing. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put it up on screen now. There we go. Look at more there. And then back on me. It looks really good, doesn't it? Looks incredible. I love it so much, I bought a second one. So here we are full screen on the Zoomfoon CanLink capture card. And I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm gonna tell you about the testing that I've done, how long I've been using it for, and why I think you should buy this over the CamLink. And it's not just about price. This thing has actually got better specs than the CamLink. So we're gonna cover all of that. But first things first, it basically just comes in a plain white box. You get a USB-C to type A cable, absolutely devastated because it has got a there we go it has got a USB-C connection on it there and then you can see it's got a HDMI connection so you only get a cable with it the cable's fairly long and I know you can't really complain at this price but I would have loved it if they included a USB-C cable as well USB-C type C but then if it didn't have a USB-C to type A I'd probably whinge as well because most PCs don't have too many USB-C ports on them this is the difficulty with also being a PC user and a Mac user. I need everything USB-C for my Mac, but Type A doesn't bother me too much on my PC because that's what I've got more ports of. Now, when I bought this, I didn't buy this to replace my CamLink, but it has now replaced my CamLink. I no longer use my CamLink, and I'm going to go into all the issues that I had with my CamLink at the end of the video. But I actually originally bought this to be a second video input device for basically PowerPoint. Um, I'm doing like webinars and stuff at work and um, I needed a way to bring the webinar screen up that we've got on the TV. I found that when I was running PowerPoint with OBS at the same time, it's like you have to be clicked on PowerPoint for it to change the slide. So as soon as I click off to OBS, then I've got the person doing the webinar trying to change the slide and it was just going to cause issues. So that's originally what I bought this for. I just needed something cheap. And to be honest, I only really needed a 1080p signal anyway. So when I found this, I was like super happy. Now you would have heard me there mention about how this thing has got better specs than the CamLink. So let me tell you about the CamLink. So because it's a camera capture card, it doesn't need a bunch of frame rates and a bunch of resolutions, but they're always useful to have. So the CamLink can do 1080p 60 frames per second in the YUI2 color space, okay, YUI2. Now, when you go to 4K, which is 25 and 30 frames per second on the CamLink, it's limiting you to NV12, but that's what I'm using here, it's fine. NV12 isn't the best for text recognition and stuff. So again, like when I'm bringing in a PowerPoint, 1080p YUI2. Now the Zoomfoon does all of that, but it adds some extra resolutions in. So this can actually also do 1440p and it does 1440p 50 frames per second in YUI2. Now 1440p 60 all the way up to 4K 30, it also does 25 frames per second in 4K. That is limited to NV12, which I just spoke about, but it also adds an extra one in there as well. So it also does 1080p 120. Now it wasn't available straight away. I couldn't see it within OBS um, and I couldn't see it even in the video control panel. I had to go into the advanced display settings and windows and then set that so it could be 1080p 120. So I imagine with the right HDMI splitter, you could use this for gaming as well. You know, Xbox Series S, PS5, again, limited to 1080p because you'd probably want to come in at 1080p, um, you know, 120, or if you didn't want to do high refresh rate, 1440p 60. I mean, that's dope. Um, I'm not going to recommend it for gaming because I haven't massively tested it for gaming. And I want to recommend this as a camera capture card. Okay. That's what I want to recommend this as. 
Now, I know there's a huge amount of Elgato fanboys out there. I like Elgato products. I buy some, I've used them, but they're not the be all and end all. I always, you know, I always respect the quality that they offer. Always think they're slightly overpriced. I'm always trying to find an Elgato alternative, and I certainly reckon that the Sumfoon 4K is. Now, recently, Elgato have upgraded their capture software, so it's incorporated NVIDIA's SDK. Um, so these are like the RTX effects, so you can do like blur background, noise reduction, also all the audio effects and stuff as well. So you could say that's a reason to buy this over it. I don't think it's worth £80 more, but if you want to take advantage of your NVIDIA GPU, you may be thinking, well, that's what I want to spend. I'm willing to spend the extra £80. Wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, version 28 of OBS onwards is going to have, there's already the beta version out, has already got all those NVIDIA SDK effects built into them. So it doesn't matter what capture card you use, what camera, what video feed you bring in, you can apply all those NVIDIA sharpening tools, blurring tools, and all of that sort of stuff. If you're not using a, you know, a, a nicer camera, um, like what I'm using. And I did totally forget to mention what camera we're using here. So we're using a ZV-E10 um, coming in at 4K, 25 frames per second with a Zeiss 24 millimeter F1.8. I think the 24 millimeter looks loads better than well, not loads better, but I think it's a much better focal length than the Sigma 16 millimeter. 16 millimeters too freaking wide when you've got it right up by your desk. This is actually a better lens for streaming. Very expensive lens, should cost 800 pounds. I picked it up used for 200 pounds, which is a bargain. Anyway, I've lost topic. Where were we? NVIDIA effects. Again, like I said, all of that stuff's going to be incorporated into OBS, so I wouldn't be massively bothered about it. Now, the reason this has replaced my cam link, there is a reason why this has replaced it, and it comes down to reliability. So the first thing I did when I got this capture card, because it is a cheap capture card from a brand that I haven't heard of before, plugged it into my computer, left it into my camera, like plugged it in first thing in the morning, left it running on my camera for like 12, probably 14 hours. Came back into the room, connection still there, video feed still there, hasn't overheated gets a little bit warm, doesn't get any warmer than a cam link, okay? Fine, reliability is good. Actually bought this original one on Amazon Prime Day, so I think that was middle of July, so I've been using it for a month, month and a half now. Wanted to test its reliability out, liked it so much a couple of weeks ago, bought a second one, second one's been fine. No disconnect issues. So let's talk about the cam links issues then. I've made two videos discussing the cam link and it's disconnect issues. One of them was just a refresh, just because Elgato changed their software, but even that one has still had a lot of comments on it. Now there was an issue, which I don't want to go into too much. You can go and check out the, my cam link video if you're having issues with cam link disconnects. Anyway, I'll link that below. But one of the issues was the AMD B550 X570 USB disconnect issues um, because of high bandwidth devices. Again, really don't want to go into it too much, but have a read up on about that pretty much fixed now anyway since BIOS updates but I still know a few you know I'm still contacted about people on the latest BIOSes on certain motherboards that are still having issues and that was causing a lot of disconnects and dropouts and I've got a guide which I said is below which is some fixes you can do to make it run better but then I've ended up speaking to a lot of other people so people using Intel systems Macs all of this sort of stuff that are just having dropouts with their cam links a regular one for me is I load OBS I turn my camera on everything's on cam link doesn't want to talk everything else is working fine every other capture card i've ever owned is working fine but the cam link is just like no so now i have to close obs open windows camera load the camera in there close that go back into obs and then it's worked sometimes that can take two or three attempts other times it has to be a reboot and you know you could just say oh, maybe i'm just one affected user the fact is i've spoke to a lot of people about it over those two videos i made with the cam link to know that there's been a lot of issues with it so I was really after a separate capture card. I'd been after just a camera based capture card for a while. And there was a couple of other ones that obviously came out after the cam link. The first one was by Razer, the Ripsaw X. I think that's the most recent one, but that's more expensive than a cam link. And I knew it was probably going to fall synapse down my throat. So I just went not even going to bother. Then I seen reviews on the live cap 4K, really liked the live cap 4K. Again, it offered some extra resolutions, had USB-C, both cables in the box as well. But the problem I had with the live cap 4K was with my Sony cameras. So both with my ZV-E10 and A6400, I ran into the same issue. 
and this affects a lot of Sony cameras and it's when you want to output 4K from the HDMI. It doesn't matter if you do 1080p, absolutely fine. Live cap 4K, perfect capture card. You want 1080p 60, I would highly recommend it. The problem is when you output 4K is if you want to record internally on the cam camera. So I'm not just recording to my computer, also recording to the SD card on the camera. It disables face tracking autofocus. So if you disable internal recording, so you say, so it's 4K HDMI output only, it's a setting on it, then that allows you to have the face tracking autofocus, which most people are gonna want, and you're gonna record on you, you know, through your computer. I found that setting very hard to turn on with the live cap 4K. I think I got it on the A6400 once, I tested a bunch of cables, bunch of different adapters, even bought new ones. You know, there was just like, there was some kind of handshake that wasn't working there. So the live cap 4K had to be returned and I was gutted about it because I thought it was gonna be my my cam link successor so when i saw this now we're back to the zoom boom 4k i was like i'm gonna give it a go but i could already see i was like no way it's probably just mjpeg it's probably crap look through the specs oh it's yui2 nice oh it's nv12 at 4k nice oh it's got a USB C. nice oh it's 40 pound nice they're constantly running between 10 and 25 percent discounts off on it nice really nice so i can fully recommend this capture card Honestly, you can buy three of these for a cam link if you get it when it's priced right. Three, probably almost four to be fair. And I'd buy it all day long, not because it's cheaper capture card, but because it's a better capture card. That is what the Zoom Foom 4K is. It is a better capture card. Now, like I said, I've only owned it a month and a half, so time will tell. I've had the cam link for two years, and even though it disconnects all the freaking time, it still works. You know, it still works. <laughs> it just doesn't work how it's intended to. So um, yeah, just a quick video. I wanted to show you, show you the video quality there. Let's just go back at the end there. Look at that. Come on. You wouldn't be able to tell me if I didn't have it written down there on screen, you wouldn't be able to tell me which capture card is which. Anyway, that's it from me today. Make sure you leave a like, make sure you subscribe. If you buy the Zoom Theme 4K and you really enjoy it, let me know. If it turns out that I just got two really good ones and the rest of them all duds, also let me know. Make sure you subscribe and I'll be back with some more videos very soon.